Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we have Brittany in the house. I'm so excited to be filming on her hands again. We are starting off by removing her current design. I did record that, so if you guys are interested in watching that, make sure you guys check it out on my channel. But we're starting out using the Kiara Sky e-file at a speed of about 10 to 11,000 RPMs. And I'm just with very light pressure removing her current design, which consists of some chrome powder and some gel art soap. We are going to be, again, very carefully, very gently just filing that off. I'm not trying to remove bulk product at this point. I'm just gently removing her design. I hadn't asked her exactly what she wanted, um, and so I just went ahead and started removing her design. And then I start asking questions to kind of get a feel for exactly what process I need to take on her nails. So we're just going with it. And then at this point as well if i see any bit of lifting i go ahead and file it down just a little bit so that it's a little bit thinner and i can easily remove it with my mandrel bit Once I have all of that removed, I'm gonna go ahead and reshape these nails. You do not absolutely have to do this at all whatsoever. I just prefer doing it just to make sure that when I lay my acrylic, it's nice and thin versus having to go in and over file and then expose some of the acrylic underneath. Typically when you're doing a backfill, that's what happens. So I just go ahead and just be cautious and file them at the beginning. And I'm also taking my hand file and filing the surface of the nail. Now again, at this point, I still didn't know exactly what process I needed to do on her nails. So I'm just going in with my basic fill process until I gather the correct information of exactly what we're doing on her nails as far as the design goes. So we're just filing away the sides and then again very lightly that surface. Now we're going in and prepping her natural nail. To do so, I'm using the mandrel bit and sanding band, both from Profiles Backstage. These sanding bands are the purple ones in medium grit, and I'm just using very light pressure. E-file is at a speed of 4,000 RPMs for my prep. And I'm just going in, gently pushing back that cuticle while also just lightly buffing the surface of her natural nail and removing any lifting she may have. And I'm making sure that I'm getting in those sides as well as best as possible. Now, as far as the design goes that my client requested, she does want a French style nail art with some 3D flowers on top. So to achieve this design, you can either just go in with gel polish since she has that clear base or you can backfill it 
add some nude acrylic and then go in with your nail art on top. However, I personally like using less gel products as possible because I feel like it really thickens up that nail. It can create chipping and it can also just mess up the shape and I am huge on shaping. So at this point right here in the video, I'm actually asking her if she cares to see the growth of her nail and that way I can kind of weigh my options and see what route I should take. Of course, she said no, as most people do, so she did not want to see that growth underneath, so my best option to do and achieve the design that she wants is to backfill her nails at this point. So because I wasn't so deep into my prep, I was like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and take my e-file, put it back to a speed of 10 to 11,000 RPMs, and I'm just very quickly going in and thinning those nails out. This wasn't a long process at all because I'm not fully bringing it all the way down. I'm basically just giving me some wiggle space to add on a good amount of nude, give the thickness that she likes on her nails and not work myself, you know, too much. So again, very, very quickly, I'm just thinning them out and basically focusing on that area that's going to be showing through. Um, whenever it comes to French nails, of course, you do the French design in a color and it covers basically half of the nail, a little bit less sometimes. So I'm just focusing on the area that's actually going to be exposed, really, really thinning that out so I can go in and infill with that nude color. So I basically repeated that process on the rest of the nails. Now we're going back in with our prep. I didn't want to make it super, super lengthy, but if you guys are interested in seeing my entire backfill process, I will link a video for you guys so you guys can check that out. But I'm going in now with a needle bit. This one is from Profiles Backstage. It is one of my favorite and go-tos. I now put my speed down to 5,000 RPMs once again. And I'm just going around that cuticle area to fully remove any dead skin. Now immediately after, we're going in with our cuticle ball bit also from Profiles Backstage. And I'm just going in at a speed of 5,000 RPMs, very light pressure going on top of that cuticle to just lightly buff it off without having to nip or cut anything off. Now we're going in always cleaning that nail area with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe. You can also use alcohol or a dehydrator. They all work exactly the same. The purpose of this is to really soak up all those excess oils that our nails create. Now I'm going in with a triple X bond from Not Polish and very lightly coating just the area where the natural nail growth is. And then I am going directly back in with a second coat just to ensure that she doesn't get crazy amounts or no lifting. <laughs> I'm just going to go in with my basic acrylic application. I'm starting off with a medium sized bead of acrylic, applying that near the middle section of the nail, quickly blending it downwards and that's just going to work as my base and then I'm going to be building up any other areas around that cuticle area and just full on on the entire nail depending on where I need a little bit more coverage. I am using First Nude from Not Polish. Along with that, I'm using their acrylic brush in a size 12 and their monomer as well. So you can see here now that I'm just going back in with smaller beads and kind of just infilling little areas that I feel need a little bit more thickness and coverage. So I know a lot of you guys might be asking, why the heck did I not just infill her nails with clear acrylic, go in with gel polish? But like I mentioned earlier, I personally feel that I achieve a better nail design with acrylic. That is my personal preference. It's my comfort zone. I do my best work with the products that I know. So I am a creature of habit and I get so scared to get out of my comfort zone. I absolutely have tried it on myself and it's not crazy different. 
However, I just personally feel like to give my client the best service and the best nail design, I'm going to stick to what I know. So I am definitely happy that she chose the acrylic option versus gel polish, but you can absolutely find a perfect nude color and go ahead and do your clear acrylic, put your nude, and then go in with your nail art on top. But like I said, it was just my personal preference and I'm glad that my clients agree. We all know what we like and <laughs> they all know my capabilities. So we're just gonna be in the safe zone for now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish my acrylic application. I'm basically doing this on all of the nails. Like I've mentioned lots of times before, I do make her nails a little bit thicker than the normal client would want. But for the length of her nails and the skinniness because they are still little you absolutely want to make them thicker anyways but we are going to be just using the nude and leaving it as it is without encapsulating for her set Now once everything is fully dried, I'm going in with my 5-in-1 bit from Kiara Sky. My e-file is back up to 8,000 RPMs and I'm just very carefully going in with that 5-in-1 bit around that cuticle area. I'm actually going to be hand filing her nails for today's video. I've been really into hand filing nails. I feel like you just get such a good crisp shaping with it and honestly speaking because I did not want to expose any of her clear acrylic underneath I wanted to make sure that I did it lightly but effective and when it comes to hand filing I could do just that so I wanted again to be safe so I'm filing the sides and slightly underneath to bring up that natural curve that our nails take and then I'm going directly on top of the surface, very light pressure, but very quickly going on top of the entire surface vertically up and down and filing it until I see everything is nice and smooth. And of course, because we are going to be doing some nail art, I want to make sure that that surface is nice and smooth. And I am using the Kiara Sky Buffer to do that. So I'm just going in, smoothing out that surface, making sure that there's no harsh ridges, dents, divots, or anything like that, which typically you want to make sure you 
take care of that with your hand file or e-file but this is just going to smooth everything out super super nice so that you have that perfect canvas to draw whatever you want on top Now I'm going in with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe and don't mind me just flicking it off. <laughs> I sometimes get a little too into it and things just go flying. So we're just going to go ahead and clean that to prep it for the nail art. Now for our nail art, she requested lime green. I know if you guys have seen her videos on my channel before, we do lots of lime green and she kept trying to convince herself otherwise. But honestly speaking, I'm not mad at it. I love lime green. So the brighter, the better. I was totally okay with it. I did not try talking her out of it. So we're going in with this neon green from the frosting gel paints from Profiles Backstage. And I'm just doing my smile line with the liner. And then I'm going in with my thicker brush, which I like to use my 3D nail art brush for this. And I go in with the bulk area of the nail and just very quickly fill that in. I have found that this is the easiest, quickest way of drawing nail art like this. So don't be like me and try to infill the rest of the nail with the freaking liner. It takes way too long and I promise you we do not need to take a long time doing this. So again, we're lining that and then infilling the rest of the nail area and then I'm cleaning up any little areas. I was doing so good and it takes one little twitch to just ruin that design. But again, starting off with that liner, this liner is from Not Polish. It has the longer bristles, which I like for this. And we're just gonna clean up any little imperfections and then infill the rest, continue to do that. And I am going to be doing a different color on the other hand. But I'm just showing you guys a process on this one so that you guys do not get bored. It's the exact same thing, but on the other hand with a different color. Now always, always, always remember to cure this in the light. I put it in there for a full round of a minute. Sometimes I do two just depending on how long I take on the other hand. And I will work on the other hand while that is curing, but make sure you cure it. Now once it's fully dry, I go in with my top coat. This is the Not Polish Matte It. We're gonna be doing a matte base and then doing some 3D flowers on top. I'm just adding a thin layer, making it as thin as I can because sometimes matte top coats can be a little bit thick. So make sure you just run your brush over it a few times so that it thins it out a little bit more, but you still get that pretty matte effect. And then of course you wanna cure that in the light for another minute, depending on how long you take on the other hand. Always remember to alternate from hand to hand so that you use your time wisely. Now we're going in with our 3D nail art for this step. I am using the neon green. I'll list the exact name of it from Not Polish. It is one of my go-to very bright green acrylics. And then I am using my 3D nail art brush for this, which you guys, I need to buy a new one. And I went ahead and told my husband to order it while I was doing all of this. So I did not keep forgetting I've been holding it off, but in my last class, I realized that my 3D brush is just crusty dusty and it really needs to be replaced. This thing has been going strong for freaking six years almost. So I'm definitely proud of it and it is time. It is time to get a new one. So next time I use a 3D brush, it will definitely be a new one of the same one, but it'll be new. So we're just starting off by doing four petals. Very, very simple flower design. I will be leaving the inspo photo. I'm basically recreating it 
down to the T, just different color combinations. So we're just doing four petals, basically in the shape of a T, and then we're doing a tiny little dot in the middle, poking a hole in it, and that's the super simple, very easy to achieve flower. Again, we're gonna be pressing down on that middle, pulling that tip, and that's really it for the petals. And for the rest of the nail area, I'm adding little petals as well. My client made a point to say that it reminded her of the Louis Vuitton kind of design, and it really does, especially the way that they are laid out on the nail. They definitely look like they could be Louis Vuitton little logos. So we're going in, same process, pressing down the center and then using the tip of your brush to bring out that point, tucking in the sides. And then I just continue to do it until I'm happy with the petal. Repeat that on the other one. And I do apologize for the terrible lighting. I ended up fixing it a little bit after this. And I'm glad I did. I didn't even realize that I was creating so many shadows, but you guys kind of get the idea. They're very, very simple petals to achieve. So for the rest of the little petals, we are gonna be doing some horizontal. I'm adding some vertical ones and then some together, like a vertical one and a horizontal one, just to make it look like there's another flower on that side of the nail. And I'm not really being super specific with it. I'm kind of just alternating, like on the top I did a vertical one. Say the bottom one's gonna be horizontal kind of thing. And I am trying to get the petals as even as possible with the rest of the petals, just so everything looks nice and cohesive. But that's basically it, just a tiny little petal. You go with it and it looks so good. I feel like this was such a cool design to create. So shout out to that nail tech. I'll leave her linked down below so you guys can check him or her out. Now, of course, once you are done, this is basically it. You can top coat them if you want. I personally do not ever top coat my flowers because it does take away the texture 
that really make them look pretty but if your client requests it and if you feel more comfortable top coating go ahead but i just went ahead and left them like that let them dry nicely and we're going in with our cuticle oil from profiles backstage and really trying to avoid that nail and just going around her cuticles i'm lightly massaging it in and then of course on the other hand too but how pretty does the white look as well it's definitely not as noticeable as the green but it definitely gives wedding vibes elegant vibes and i love it but that basically concludes today's video let me know what you guys think down below thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys learned a ton and i will see you guys next time